What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Chow here. If we have never met, I am a high school teacher, and I'm just passionate about mentoring and really just helping students uh, on this journey called life. Thank you for clicking uh, on this video, and I just hope you learned something from today. So yesterday on Friday, we had a um, we had a leadership meeting with about 50 of my leaders on Zoom. And on one of the survey questions, I asked them, hey, what are some questions that high schoolers um, could benefit from being answered? And all these questions started popping up and I started thinking, wow, I should make a Q&A video on this. So here it is, all right, super simple. I just grabbed the first five questions from this huge, awesome list that hopefully I can answer everything at some point. Uh, but here's, uh, here are my answers to you. And thank you for those leaders who have submitted those questions. First question. Mr. Chat, what do you know now that you wish you knew in high school? A lot, everything, right? But here's my one, two, three list. Number one, that I'm worth it. Believe it or not, there was a time in my life in which, yes, I was a leader of a lot of different organizations. Yes, I was captain of two different sports teams on campus, but deep down there was a doubt. And if you have that, you're, you're not alone, right? And as great as you are, I think we all doubt ourselves sometimes. So if I could go back and I would just tell myself, hey, you're worth it, keep going. Uh, you're doing a great job and just, yeah, just keep going. Number two, it's okay if I fail. Oh my goodness, you are looking at a guy <laughs> who has failed. I failed tests, I failed people, I have failed in so many different areas, but here's what I've realized. Ultimately, uh, the greatest life lessons in life, it's you don't get them from getting or from doing everything right the first time. You just don't. A lot of the great, uh, advice and just life lessons that I've acquired in life are from my failures, right? Learning to keep going when I, when, when I don't want to. Learning to uh, persevere regardless of the circumstances. Learning to keep trying and keep learning, right? Even not for a grade. So it's okay if I fail. I would get so hard on myself back in the day um, when I would fail, and now looking back, it's like no, it's okay. Everyone fails, hang in there. Number three, spend more time with family. In high school, I loved hanging out with my friends and that's not a bad thing. But what I'm trying to say is balance it out, right? Understand that um, at the end of the day, your family is always gonna be there for you and your friends too. But as I've grown up in life and I've been out of high school now for 12, 13 years. Um, and you know, like I, like I started thinking now and I'm like, wait a minute, my family is still here with me. Uh, and some of my friends are not. All right, so balance it out. And as you go through life and spend more quality time with family. Number two, how can I get closer to my teachers when I'm learning online from home? Great question. Number one, say thank you. Whenever students say thank you to their teachers, we appreciate it so much. Why? Because even us, we're going through a hard time right now and we're trying to balance out our lives and trying to be there for our students. But a thank you goes a long way. And I'm telling you something, we remember the kids who say thank you. Number two, participate and not. Find every opportunity to participate, whether or not it's online in your Zoom chat, whether or not it's whenever a teacher posts a question, whenever, um, or if it's just doing a great job. The other thing I gotta say is nod. So many times in class, students don't think that teachers are seeing them on their screen, but sometimes we do. And so many times I've seen my students nod like this or smile and I'm like, wow, that kid is engaged that kid is fully immersed in what I'm trying to say right now. Number three, be nice and helpful. Um, I cannot tell you the amount of great students who have helped me this year and that I cannot say thank you enough for. Uh, there are students who just email me sometimes to say, hey, Mr. Xiao, is there anything I can help you out with? I've got some extra time. Or there's students who just help me even though I haven't asked them. There's this one time I posted a horrible PDF or horrible looking PDF of our textbook. And there's a student who emailed me and said, hey, Mr. Chow, I've, um, I've taken some, or, or, or I took some high quality PDFs of our textbook um, and here they are. And I just want to share them with you regardless if you're gonna use them or not. And in my head, I was like, wow, I just really appreciate those students. So if you wanna get close to the educators or to your teachers, I, do you, here's three steps to do so. Number three. How can I make friends when I'm stuck at home? Wow. This is a question I think a lot of my students are thinking. So here is my opinion. Number one, join a cause, join a club, join some organization outside of your classes 
in which people just meet up. And I'm telling you, when you're working together with people online and you're meeting with them, you start growing uh, a relationship and you start building a bond with them. So join something. Yes, yeah, so join a cause that you're passionate about. Number two, so many times we look at this question, we're like, how can I meet more friends, new friends? But my question to you is, you have current relationships. And so many times we forget to invest in those current relationships. So reach out to a friend that you've already had, reach out to a family member, reach out to a cousin, reach out to someone currently in your life, because most likely even they are thinking the same thing and they can benefit from your relationship. Number three, it's crazy, right? And, it, and trust me, I used to be in high school, I get it. But quality over quantity, right? You don't need a hundred friends, right? I, I don't think you could handle a hundred friends. No, but you need a solid core of about maybe five friends or maybe 10 friends that you can constantly check up on, constantly take care of, right? So quality over quantity. And yeah, that's my recommendation. Number four, how can I be more grateful in life? You know, one of my great mentors always tells me, the great, uh, the people who are the most grateful in life, they want what they have. So want what you have. If you want what you have, you are grateful. You are thankful, right? That is probably such a great quality of you. Number two, say it. If you're thankful for something, say it. If you're thankful for your phone, thank you, phone. If you're thankful for, for your car, thankful. Uh, thank you, car. If you're thankful for your dinner, thank you, dinner. The more you say it, the more you speak it into existence pretty much. And there's also another thing that we've talked about on my podcast where, you know, the most grateful people write down things every single day that they're thankful for. Do it, right? You can't just think it, write it, say it, right? Make it a part of your life. Number three, what do we take for granted? We take so many things for granted. I have a friend who is obsessed with sunsets. And so many people like would be like, wow, you're lame. But deep down, he understands that when he's grateful for a sunset, he's grateful for his life. He's grateful for his vision. He's grateful for just where we live. And I'm telling you, uh, that can add a lot to your life, all right? So be more grateful. Number five, let's finish up. Last one. How can I get more motivated for online school? Huge question from pretty much every student I know. So number one, get dressed up. Have you ever noticed how Mr. Chow, regardless of if, if I'm meeting with you one-on-one -on -one or if I'm teaching a class, I always dress up because whenever I'm dressed up, I don't know, I'm just a little bit more motivated and I'm dressed for success, all right? So I'm not expecting you to wear a tie or something super fancy, but you know, comb your hair, wash your face, get dressed up, put in the effort because you don't know who you're going to talk to and learn from that day, right? So sometimes that can add a little kick to our step, even though we're at home and we're super comfortable, but it just puts us in the mood. Number two, network and learn all you can about life. Here's a great piece of advice. So, so many times people don't understand that school isn't just to learn. School isn't just there to teach you about certain subjects. School is there to teach you about life. School is there to teach you about how to deal with people, how to work with people, how to motivate people, right? At the end of the day, right? It's really hard to get motivated for online school. Let's just be real. But so many times when you see the big picture, number three, you'll get more motivated. What we're going through right now, hopefully, right? We don't know, but let's be real. It's not gonna last forever, but it is gonna last. So we don't know when it's gonna last too, but if you see the big picture and you understand like, hey, sure, this is a different way of school. This is a different way to do school. This is a, like a different way to learn, but deep down, we're just grateful that we can still do it. So how do you get more motivated for online school? See the big picture and understand that, hey, what can I do now online that maybe I couldn't do when it, if this was real school, all right? So I'm telling you, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Look, whoever listens to this, I'm just grateful if you could take anything from it. And thank you for letting me share. See you next time.